Hello again and welcome to another short video. Um, this time uh, we're going to have a look at encounters and also one or two aspects of random encounters which I didn't cover in a previous video. Um, and This um, has been prompted by uh, recent discussions on Discord and on the forums. Uh, so I think we uh, can get started. We all know that uh, encounters are created uh, in this way by cl clicking on the encounters button. Um, we then uh, do the edit and add item or you can right click and select create item from the radio menu. Uh, we give our encounter a name and this, we're going to just call it goblins. Uh, and then we need to populate the encounter with our NPCs. We click the NPCs button. I've already drilled down to goblins here just to save a little time. And then we simply drag in the uh, NPC that we want to appear in the encounter. And then in this box here, we uh, specify the number. So let's suppose we want six goblins. Um, and then we can keep uh, adding NPCs to this encounter uh, as whatever we would like. Uh, so let's uh, give them a goblin boss. Um, at this point the encounter is basically done. Uh, we can click this uh, refresh button here up here and it will uh, refresh the challenge rating and the XP for the encounter. Uh, so that's really the encounter done. But uh, let's suppose that uh, we didn't really like these um, uh, tokens here because the token for the goblin boss and the token for the uh, goblin uh, are both exactly the same. So if we wanted to change the tokens uh, we can do this at this stage in the encounter itself. So we can go to our tokens menu um, and we will find uh, all whatever tokens, whatever tokens you have here, this you, your um, token bag will be different from mine. Um, but uh, we could drill through these. I mean, as you can see, I've got uh, dozens of them. Um, but uh, let's just uh, do a search for uh, goblins. And these are all the various goblin tokens or tokens which have got goblin somewhere in the name. Uh, there's a few hop goblins in there as well. Um, but at any rate, these are the goblin tokens that I have. So I maybe want to distinguish the goblin boss from the other uh, goblins. So instead of uh, having this token, um, maybe I want a more uh, vicious one. So uh, let's give it this one here. So as you can see, all we did was simply drag the token uh, from the tokens bag and we dropped it into uh, or over the top of the token that was there. Uh, now, uh, that the, this will this um, token will then be linked to this encounter and it will stay linked to this encounter uh, even if the token bag uh, or the token module uh, that this token relates to is is closed so you don't need to keep the token uh, module open uh, to use this token once you've done this then you can close off the token module if you like um, and uh, that'll save yourself a little bit of memory uh, don't drag tokens to uh, don't drag tokens to this area here um, because that won't persist. It'll be okay if this is a, just a, an account that you want to set up for this session, but that won't save and it won't persist over uh, into your next session. So if you're preparing your encounter in advance, um, then don't drag the token into uh, that area. Um, we could, of course, give this uh, goblin here, we can give them another token as well. So we can just uh, drag and drop uh, and there we have our new token. And you can see that it's replaced all the tokens down here. Uh, you would then, of course, then go and, and pre-place this encounter onto your map, uh, ready for it to be uh, brought up uh, when the uh, NPCs or the, the player characters uh, uh, encounter the goblins. So that's really it for um, encounters. That was uh, one of the things that I wanted to show you was just how to change the token. Oh, one other thing that you can do at this stage as well, if you don't like the idea of the um, goblin being called Goblin Boss, um, you know, perhaps he may actually have a name. So we can just simply do that uh, here in the encounter and we can call him uh, Bob the Goblin, whatever. Uh, and that name will show uh, on the combat tracker and on the map uh, for that particular uh, goblin. 
you could also change the uh, name for the goblins as well if you want. Um, you know, you could call them green skins or whatever. Whatever you like. But you can change the name for, uh, of the uh, uh, NPCs that are in the encounter, uh, actually in the encounter itself. So this saves you having to actually create um, a, a copy of the uh, goblin and rename that and then drag that in. So you, you can do it in the encounter itself. Uh, okay, so that's it for um, the encounters. Um, let's have a look at uh, random encounters, which we did have a look at before, uh, but I wanted to show you something else which I missed out from that video. Uh, so to get a random encounters, we click on the encounters as before, and then click on the random button up here. Uh, and this uh, gives us the random encounters uh, window. And as ever, um, well, let's right click this time and create new, and we now have a new uh, random encounter, which we can give it a name. Um, now, I showed you before that you can now drag in uh, your uh, NPCs here, uh, and then in this box, click on it and then add in a dice value. Uh, 1d6 in this case, and then when we generate our encounter from the button here, it generates a random number of goblins uh, between 1 and 6. Um, but supposing you wanted uh, an encounter, or uh, a random encounter, um, where you uh, wanted double the number of, of PCs uh, to appear. Now this is just sometimes you see this in some uh, adventures and things like that where it says uh, you know uh, goblins jump out at the characters and there should be two goblins for each PC. Well you can't actually do that um, with um, uh, random encounters. So let's just get rid of this item for the moment. Uh, drag it back in. And so the way we do this, supposing we wanted uh, two goblins for each uh, PC, so we enter our number, uh, two, and then our multiplication sign, which is always an asterisk. And then we need to tell Fantasy Grounds how many player characters, or we need to, to, to get Fantasy Grounds to find out how many player characters there are in the party. So we would do this by adding in a string character, and then uh, a, the PC. And this will generate a counter equal to double the number of PCs. So for every uh, PC there is, you will get uh, a counter of two goblins. So we can demonstrate this if we have a look at the party sheet here. And the players must be on the party sheet. This, this string PC here works off the party sheet. It looks at how many uh, uh, players there are on the party sheet. So if the player isn't on the party sheet, then this um, encounter will, will come up null. Uh, so we've got two um, uh, players here, two player characters, and if we generate this encounter, here we have our four goblins, which is exactly right. And just to show you that it isn't uh, a trick if we uh, keep uh, doing it, we will uh, continually get four uh, goblins. Um, we can go further with this uh, if we wanted to. Um, we could, for example, um, add in a dice string, 1d6, and then add in uh, two times the uh, number of PCs. And here we have, we've got, it's generated seven. So that's basically taken uh, four uh, goblins for the number of PCs, and then the dice roll has uh, added in another three. If we keep going, um, here we can see that it all works out fine. Um, you can uh, also um, add in uh, uh, other uh, different uh, strings here uh, to uh, calculate um, uh, the number of uh, monsters appearing uh, depending on the number of characters uh, that the, uh, there are in the party. Uh, for example, um, you may want to have a number of NPCs appearing uh, determined by the number of player characters. So you may want to have player characters uh, plus two extra. Uh, so in this case, we generate that, we get four. Um, we can uh, show that if we change that two to three, we get five. Uh, so that uh, the string PC uh, 
the, that little bit of code there. Uh, it was introduced actually some time ago, um, but I completely missed it uh, at the time that it, um, it was introduced, um, uh, and I only discovered it recently. So I thought it was probably uh, worthy of a video, uh, just in case uh, there were other people like me who hadn't noticed it. Uh, it is quite a handy little function when it comes to random encounters. Um, of course, with random encounters as well, you can do the same thing with tokens, etc., as we did with the ordinary encounters. Uh, if we don't fancy that particular, uh, if we don't fancy that particular uh, token, then we can use a different token, and when we generate it, it keeps the token that you uh, uh, allocated it to it. Uh, right, um, I think, oh, and of course one other thing is you can uh, rename uh, the, uh, you can rename the character or NPC as well, and when you generate it you get the new token and the new name. Uh, right, um, that's it I think for this video, thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one, I have no doubt. Cheers for now.